uh, waiting line and queuing theory uh, the second chapter in operation research course we always have to find the trade-off between uh, waiting time and cost of service so I'll give you an example like if you are at the checkout in a supermarket <coughs> and there are only a couple of people working on the checkout and there's like l large amount of people waiting to go through the checkout uh, this would lead to customer dissatisfaction people will not be happy because they had to wait for so long to get through the checkout so the next they go somewhere else so if you're like the manager of a supermarket or operation manager of a supermarket so you have to find the trade-off the balance between hiring too many people on the checkout so people will be happy don't have to queue and between hiring very few people on the checkout so you have to find the right balance how many people to hire so you need in a way to balance um, you need in a way to balance the number of people waiting in the queue as well as you need to balance uh, the cost of people working on the checkout and there are no, no, no. in the system there are three parts so you have <coughs> In a checkout, you have three system. So in a way, in a waiting van and queuing theory. So this is the service station. So as we have the queue here, there is a civil servant sitting here to serve people, and here is the exit of the queue. And in a way, you have the people in the queue waiting here to go through the system. Okay, and there's only one person in the system to be served at a time. So the queuing it composed of three parts: the people waiting in the queue, the people inside the service system uh, currently being served, and the people exiting the queue. Okay, so I'm gonna show you this example. So back to the supermarket example. So if you are the operation manager in a supermarket, and so we have here the total cost, and we have here the service level. Uh, cost of providing the service, which is the one in green. So the more people I hire, the more people I hire. For example, here, which is the service level. So the more people I have to work on the checkout, the service will be better, and but it would cost me more money. So you could see the line is increasing by the number of people hired. At the same time, cost of waiting time. Cost of waiting time, which is like is equate or equivalent to the dissatisfaction cost. Dissatisfaction cost, which means uh, when people are not happy, they're dissatisfied, they're not satisfied, they are dissatisfied uh, lead to dissatisfaction costs, it's a loss of goodwill so people will stop coming to the supermarket a second time uh, so here the cost of waiting time, it's true when there are more people hired on the checkout the cost of, the cost of waiting time with dissatisfaction would be less okay, so you could see here, there's a contrast between the blue and the green line so you have to find the right, the one in the middle, which is like trade-off, to find the balance between the two of them. It's like you don't want to end up paying too much money. So we we have here a different system. So you have here the normal queuing service, the departure. There's another example, like you go, f like for example, you are registering as a university. So you go to your advisor, and then you go to the registration office. So there's queues. The single channel multi-phase. Multi-phase you could be served by any one of those two. Similar to when you go to a bank, people behind the counter. So you could be served by anyone sitting behind the counter regardless of their names because they all do the same job. And the same here, multi-channel single phase system. Uh, single phase system like you're obliged to go through uh, when you have arrival and then there is a uh, <coughs> several steps so you go through the first and then you go to the second and then departure okay uh, the main condition for characteristic for the waiting line and queuing theory uh, the arrival are served on first and first out basis so the first person to go through the queue is the first one to be out of the queue like no jumping of the queue no bulking no ranging of the queue you're not allowed to change lanes in the queue you're not allowed to change the queues and you're not allowed to leave the queue if you leave the queue, you won't be able to study it properly. And arrival rate does not change over time. Well, over the period you're studying it, like for this hour, for this day, so it will be the same arrival rate. 
and we have Poisson distribution from large population. So here we have to go back to the probability lesson. Poisson distribution, it means I'll give you a very quick example. Uh, a Poisson distribution, it means you uh, saying, for example, if you have a stretch of road and someone will ask you how often there is an accident on this road, so you say on average once per month, but does not mean that it's going to be one, it could be more, it could be less. And the same here, so arrive is always Poisson distribution. Uh, service time, <coughs> uh, average rate is known. Uh, the service time is negative exponential distribution. And there is at the end average service time, and there is at the end average service time. Average service time is greater than the arrival rate. And this is correct because I will give you an example. If the service rate, for example, is like 10 hour and the arrival is 15 per hour, so you end up with like a Q. <coughs> So you always need the service to be greater than the average arrival rate. Uh, I will give you an example, uh, like so. We will we'll explain this like really quick. So we have mean number of arrival is lambda, mean number of people is a Q, and we have all those factors. We're gonna go back to it in a second. Average number of customer reviewed in the system and number of being served, and we have average <coughs> time a customer spend in the system. And we have average number of customers in the queue, and yani how many people on average there is in queue. L is how many people on average there are in the system. And we have WQ, which is extremely important, the average time a customer spent waiting in a queue. And all service stations, they work around this value, because you always want to minimize this value as much as possible. Okay, and we have utilization factor. Utilization is mean on average how, mu how much, how often, what's the percentage the operator was busy or was idle. So it's lambda over mu, as you can see it here. Okay, so the idle time will be 1 minus rho value. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm going to solve a couple of examples. Uh, and I will go back to this one. I'm going to solve a couple of examples here in the next video. Okay, but do check the playlist uh, for other videos.